We're starting a new feature today on Planted. It's Plant Showcase, and today's flower is Rhododendrons. Our Plant Showcase is Rhododendrons and Azaleas that are part of a thousand species in the Rhododendron genus. So the original taxonomists had them separate. Azaleas had about five to seven stamens. Rhododendrons had around 10. So they kept them separate, but now they are all the same genus. So all rhododendrons and azaleas are rhododendrons. In addition to the stamens on the rhodes and azaleas, they actually, every bloom, if you look really closely, you'll see these little series of dots. And those are actually bee and bumblebee runways. They attract pollinators, not just the bees, but other pollinators. It's, it calls them in and they go in and gather the pollen. It's really cool. Rhodes and azaleas both have deciduous, where they drop their leaves, and they also have evergreen, where they keep their leaves. And so this, um, this is an example of an Xberry azalea, and the leaves are fairly soft, and um, they change color in the fall. It's amazing. This one is called President Roosevelt. And um, you can see this is the newer growth. This is the older growth. So this year's growth, last year's growth, and the year before. And um, rhodes, all of the rhodes and azaleas that um, have evergreen type foliage, they lose about a third of it every year. So this old growth will fall off. And then next year, this will fall off. One of my favorite rhododendrons is actually kind of small um, leaved and it has um, lovely purple flowers that come out in February. And um, it's called PJM. And um, the new growth, the, the very new growth that comes out is bright green, bright green but then it starts turning to purple. So in the fall, it will be purple. And um, it doesn't lose its foliage, except of course, you know, a third of it every year. So new growth, about one or two years old. Another variety of rhododendron is called Yak, for short, Y-A-K, but its full name is Yakusomato, and from Japan, of course. And um, it has this wonderful, fuzzy, furry covering on the back side of the leaves. And that's called indumentum. And so um, some people try to rub it off. Don't do that. It's part of its beauty. Supposedly, they tend to stay fairly short. All the ones in our garden are as tall as I am, if not taller. You really want to know what you're getting when you purchase a rhododendron because they want to be trees. There are some small varieties and you can ask a nursery person how big the rhododendron is going to get. But behind me are the original rhododendrons, uh, one set of the original rhododendrons that came with the house. And they have grown into humongous trees. They were pretty big when we bought the house 28 years ago and now they're almost 30 feet at least tall. And then behind me here are rhododendrons that we planted and they quickly turned into trees. So you don't want to put rhododendrons close to your house. Two local nurseries not very far from here are Chimicum Woods in Port Ludlow that have species rhododendrons. And then there's Whitney Gardens that's um, in Brennan. And Whitney Gardens is also a full service nursery. So they have websites and um, you want to go check them out like February through June each year to, to look for good rhododendrons. There aren't very many downsides to rhododendrons, but some people think they're really messy. And um, maybe they are if you look at the ground around where I'm sitting, but they rake up really easily and they go in your compost bin or in your yard waste bin. 
And so um, I find the beauty of rhododendrons outweighs the messiness. One little caveat though is the sepals that are around the blooms are, um, they're quite sticky. They're these, these just, and parts of the blooms too. They're sticky. So our adorable Sheltie dog, Patty and I track these things into the house. So you just have to pick up more often than other times of the year. And rhododendrons are fairly disease free. There's an amazing publication from Washington State University Extension, EM091. You can purchase it online or it's free download. So you can just download the PDF onto your computer and refer to it anytime you want. A question we're often asked is, do rhododendrons need fertilizer? And the answer is, not usually. We, we have never fertilized any of the rhododendrons in our garden, but sometimes they may need fertilizer. And um, EM091 and a master gardener and a good CPH nursery staff person will help you figure out if your rhododendron ever would need fertilizing. The main thing is site selection put it in a spot that, that is good for that rhododendron. There are some that like sun, some that like shade, and they do need water to establish them. Plus, they will need water during our really hot, dry months, and even in the wintertime if we don't get any rain. So there is um, a, dis a disease that rhododendrons get, or a condition, um, called rhododendron bud blast. It was also called rhododendron bud blight. So you'll see both terms. And it ta talks about it in EM091. But um, it's um, inoculated by a little leaf hopper, which is really kind of a pretty thing. It's bright green with red stripes. So bud blast or bud blight kills the buds. That's why you don't want it. And that's why you want to look out for it. And what would happen is if I didn't take this off, um, and dispose of it in the garbage, the next year it, it would happen again and just year after year and eventually the plant becomes so weak that it dies. There are um, weevils that chew around the edges of rhododendron leaves. They come out at night if you want to see them and um, they just nibble around the edges of the rhododendrons. Some people don't like messiness so you know there are varieties that are resistant to root weevil, so. We chose rhododendrons for this plant showcase because we love these plants, but we will be showing you other plants at future plant showcases.